One of the challenges we face as a student and as an individual is procrastination. We want to study, we want to perform certain tasks, but we find ourselves postponing to a later time. Now, when that time comes, we postpone it to another time. We keep doing this over and over again, it doesn't stop. And this particular habit prevents us from actually getting things done and actually growing as an individual. It prevents us from performing very well in our academics as well, at least to the best of our capabilities. Hi, my name is Kwelumi, and in this video, I will be sharing with you ways in which you can overcome procrastination so that it will impede your growth as an individual and as a student. This video will be in two parts. The first will be about what causes procrastination. Then the second will be how you can overcome procrastination. The general belief is that we procrastinate because we are lazy. Others believe that they do better and work best under pressure that results from procrastinating the work to the deadline. Neither of these is true. Almost everyone that says they do better and work best when they procrastinate to the deadline actually haven't created a plan before, stick to it, and then have extra time to review their work before the deadline. The rush of leaving things to the end and rushing over it when the deadline is very close has a lot of negative consequences. Now, some of these consequences, you have anxiety, you have stress, you have fatigue, and we often fall below our standards. We do those tasks way lesser than we should have. So the quality and the outcome of that task or of that uh, work tends to be below average. We procrastinate because our drive for delay is stronger than our drive to act. Now, these two drives are influenced by motivation and self-control. Our motivation and self-control are negatively affected by delayed outcomes, exhaustion, prevalence of feeling good at the moment, fear and anxiety, among many others. Now, let's go over six major reasons why we procrastinate. The first is prioritization of short-term mood. Now, we prefer to feel good at the moment, damning the long-term consequences. Now, as you with this, we have hedonistic delay, instant gratification, and then the pressure principle. Hedonistic is about us postponing um, a certain tax because of uh, unenjoyable activities. Let's say, for example, now you're, you're postponing your study because you want to like play a game, because you want to like chill with your friends. While instant gratification is you enjoying yourself at the moment. At this particular point in time, oh, I just want to just chill, I want to enjoy. While pleasure principle is one that talked about us just following pleasure. Anything that gives us pleasure, we tend to prioritize them over things that do not give us pleasure. The second is tax aversiveness. We often find some tax unpleasant and not enjoyable, not pleasurable, so we tend to postpone them because they, they don't bring us, they don't, they don't really make us happy, they don't give us pleasure, we don't enjoy them at all. The third is feeling overwhelmed. We tend to postpone tasks that are that looks big, quite um, vague to us. For example, you you probably want to like uh, finish probably um, for probably uh, you want to study for UTM exam now, and you plan to like finish the organic you get the back of mind to like finish the whole organic chemistry in just a single day. That's if you go to go and check your textbook and you see this the area, the number of pages um, for the organic chemistry, you most likely not want to actually study at that time because you just postpone it at that time because this is like too much for you. Now, the fourth is delayed outcome. We tend to postpone work or tasks that we have to do that we, don't, we won't get the reward almost immediately. For example, studying. It's not maybe you will do your exam immediately after studying. It's something that you have to wait for like months or weeks for before you actually do it. So that's more like, does, is not, that's not enough motivation for you to actually even like pick the book because you say, okay, the exam is like later on now. Okay, I will just read when the exam is near. The fifth is time management issue. Now this arises when we are unable to allocate specific time and stick to it for each task. So we tend to postpone the many tasks after. Let's say we want to do like five taxes today. Because of your poor time management, you are probably you allocate okay you be spending like one hour for this tax and then you you find that you spend more than that you spend like one hour 30 minutes and then after the, completing like four tax you the day is already over 
So you find yourself postponing the last tax to like a later time. The sixth one, which is the last, is low motivation and depression. Most of the time that we procrastinate, we procrastinate because we are not enthusiastic about the work that we wanted to do. And those are six ways in which we procrastinate. Now let's talk about how you can actually overcome procrastination, both long term and short term. The first is assess your procrastination. The first thing you should do is identify situations where you procrastinate unnecessarily, figure out how you actually procrastinate, figure out where and when you procrastinate and finally figure out why you procrastinate and this allows you to know more about yourself so you will be able to implement the right approach to tackle the procrastination for example when you procrastinate probably maybe it's in the evening and why do you procrastinate probably because you are tired or because you are yeah probably because you are tired and then um where probably when you are in your room or distance knowing more about why you procrastinate when you procrastinate where you procrastinate will, will allow you to actually be able to implement the right principle to tackle it so the first approach is assess your procrastination now the second is create an action plan based on known anti-procrastination techniques now you already have all your all your wise why you procrastinate, when you procrastinate, where you procrastinate, what are the chain thoughts that actually come to your mind when you procrastinate. So the next thing for you is to sit down and then look for an anti-procrastinating um, techniques that will be able to counter those uh, reasons why you procrastinate, where you procrastinate and do and your actual procrastination itself. Now, so what are anti-procrastination techniques? Anti-procrastination techniques are methods that have been found to work against procrastination. Now, these techniques have been uh, experimented upon and then they've been found to actually overcome procrastination. I will list those anti-procrastination techniques for you and then you can pick the one that actually works for you. Number one, unpacking. Now in unpacking you break huge taxes into small small ones, small small achievable ones. So let's say you want to um, like study organic chemistry now when you're preparing for your whole level exam. What you do is okay you start with hydrocarbon Okay, for this hydrocarbon, I'll probably spend like one hour to study this hydrocarbon. Then from hydrocarbon, I'll probably move to alkane. From alkane, then I'll move to alkane. So now you've broken each of those, the old bulky uh, tasks of studying organic chemistry. You've broken it down into small, small uh, subtopics so that you, then you start picking each of those subtopics bit by bit. So it won't look um, huge and vague to you. And number two, make the tax easier and enjoyable. And the best approach to actually make the tax easier is to reduce the friction between you and the tax. And let me paint a scenario. Let's say you want to study and you're on your bed. You notice that when you're on your bed, you most likely want to either sleep or to actually watch movie. So it's better for you to actually take yourself from the bed or you can just, just pack the bed if it's like a student kind of bed, pack the bed and then go to a study table so that you'll find it very difficult to actually go back to bed. And then it will be very easy for you to just pick your book and place on the on the table and then you'll be comfortable actually performing that task of actually studying. And to make it enjoyable, the way you make it enjoyable is probably you can start listening to songs. If you're the kind of person that actually loves listening to songs, you can listen to songs as you are studying, even though it's not entirely advisable. But then the most important thing for you to do is to start. Once you start with music, you will enjoy the studying. Like personally for me now, I, I, I study with music. So anytime I want to study, I am more eager to actually study because I know that okay, I will listen to songs and then I love listening to songs. For you, it might not be music. For you, it might be something else. Probably, um, probably eating chocolate or something, something or something else. Just figure out what it is for you, what you enjoy, and then incorporate it into that task that you don't really enjoy. Number three, make it very difficult for you to procrastinate by removing potential distractions and and improving your environment. And the way you do this is, for example, if you find out that, okay, your phone tends to distract you, probably from the notifications from social media, what you should do is just put your phone on airplane mode or you can switch off your phone. That way you won't be distracted by your phone. And if probably it's not a phone for you, probably, it's, probably, it's sleep, probably you love sleeping and then you always tend to be there by sleep. What you should do is you just probably just pack your bread, create a friction. Now the, the same principle that you applied when you are trying to start the task, like to make it enjoyable, you have to make what will allow you to procrastinate, you have to make it extremely difficult. And the way you do that is by creating a friction between you and that task that actually wants you to procrastinate, like sleeping, like watching a movie. For example, if, if it's movies that actually distract you, you might probably store all the movies on the flash 
and then you probably you go and put the anytime you want to perform a task you put the flash drive in somewhere somewhere very far away so that it will take you work it will take you hard work to try to go pick up the flash the reason why we procrastinate oftentimes is because we we often we don't we don't want to like more like stress ourselves so rather than if you go and pick up the flash you most likely just sit down and just just enjoy and just enjoy your your tax and just continue with the tax and another way to also to, by improving your environment you make the tax very more enjoyable a particular way you can improve your environment is by getting a study desk making sure that you clean your study desk anytime you want to study you make sure that you are not studying where why your door is open so that nobody will come in and then they will distract you you make sure that in your environment that particular environment that you actually want to perform that task you remove every possible means of distraction from that environment that way you will find it very difficult to actually procrastinate. Now, the fourth anti procrastination technique is delay before indulging in the procrastination. You can delay before indulging in the procrastination by counting to 10, to 20, to 30, to whatever number that you are actually quite comfortable with. Now, what this does is most times you procrastinate due to like reflex action. And by counting 1 to 10 or 1 to 20, you are bringing your subconscious, you are bringing your like consciousness back to reality of, oh, you are doing a certain tax. Rather than for you to just go on autopilot and just go procrastinate or go do whatever it is that will um, take you away from the tasks that you want to do or that you are doing. Now, the fifth one is set personal deadlines. Now, I'm saying personal deadlines here because let's say maybe you have a project that you want to work on and you have to submit the project for after a month. Setting a personal deadline for yourself, you might say, okay, I will finish this particular um, work um, like in the next two weeks or three weeks. Then after setting that, then you cannot have enough time to review the work and the reviewing cannot come at your own pace. But then setting a personal deadline will make you more eager to actually do the work. Because rather than for you, if you don't have a personal deadline, you'll just be doing the work, okay, I still have time, I still have time. But if you have a personal deadline for yourself, you stick to that personal deadline and that will even motivate, motivate you more to actually study, to study, to do the task. This is plan ahead of obstacles. When, when performing a task of studying, we tend to experience obstacles and these obstacles usually provide an opportunity for us to procrastinate and the best way for us to actually do this is plan ahead of that obstacle okay if like for me now if i want to record this video now i just okay one major issue i might have is okay if there is no light okay what can i do to actually overcome that so that once i start recording i'll just continue now maybe when i'm recording since i'm in nigeria they can take the light anytime now maybe when i'm recording they can they will take the light and then I will start to, I will not postpone or procrastinate the recording of the video to another time. Now, the second technique is increase your motivation. Now, you can increase your motivation by using a reward and strict day. Now, for the reward, probably after completing, now, for example, we, let's say use the case of actually studying uh, the organic chemistry. You may say, okay, after completing hydrocarbon, then I will eat is a chocolate. After completing, completing hydrocarbon, I will probably watch an episode of my favorite series. And then after completing the next one, you do this, you reward yourself at every, after completing each of those small, small taxes. And then during the strict days, if you've actually stuck to this uh, tax for probably like seven days, then you can say, okay, after six days, if I complete this task for, if I'm able to do this task consistently for six days, then the seventh day, I'll probably use that one to rest and just shoot. So that way you'll even be motivated to actually do it consistently and then to actually do the task. Now, it can also increase your motivation by using episodic future thinking. Now, what does episodic future thinking mean? Anytime you want to start a task, you think of your future self. In the next five years, if I do this task, what will my life be like after completing this? If I do this task now, if I do this consistently? Let me use this perfect example. Let's say, okay, you are preparing for an exam now, and then you don't have the motivation to actually study for the exam. What you should do in that case is just imagine yourself, okay, this exam I'm trying to prepare for. If I study now and I study consistently writing the exam. What will my result be like? What, what are those things that is waiting for me if I perform this task? For my future self when I perform this task? Now that will even motivate you to actually do it better because it's, it's more like maybe you're already getting the outcome of actually performing that task. Another way you can also increase your motivation is actually to focus on the process itself. Just enjoy the process and enjoy the studying. Just focus on that, just that alone. The eighth anti-procrastination technique is use time management techniques. And some of them includes creating a to-do list, setting a reminder for those tasks, and you can also use Ivy Lee methods. Ivy Lee methods require you to write down all the taxes you have to complete in the today, for example, and then you you write the most important ones first, 
after writing the most important project, then you start with those most important ones before you actually move to the less important ones. Another time management technique is Pomodoro method. I think I already made a video on that, so you can check. The night anti procrastination technique is create a starting ritual. Now, it's not the ritual that you are thinking about. Now, the ritual is just something that you do before you actually start the task. For example, right before you start reading, you listen to songs. Right before you start reading, you take, you take chocolate. Right before you start reading, you do this. Right before you start a particular task, you do you basically certain things that you do before you start a task. And it always advice for you to actually do stuff that you enjoy. Stuff that you know that when you do it, it will, it will give you pleasure. And after you give me pleasure, then you start that task. But never start a task by playing a video game or watching a movie. That's it's against it will basically be against you but then for example something that is just brief but then that still brings you pleasure like eating chocolate um listening to your favorite music those will actually help you to even be more eager to actually start the task because you know okay if you want to start this task so these are the things i will do and those things are actually quite enjoyable after creating those plans using those anti-procrastination techniques then you implement them and monitor the progress now because along the line once you implement it if you implement a particular plan it might not necessarily work some part of the plan might work some part, other plans of the stuff might not work you examine the progress and then you can you definitely know where to actually improve on so that you get the best out of that plan that's all guys if you found this very helpful kindly hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed yet kindly consider doing so bye guys see you in my next video